going on lasagnas? It's your boy Dylan Lasagna and today welcome to my raw reactions for the Memorial Day episode of Raw and what was another holiday episode of Monday Night Raw. Well, nothing can be, well, yeah, a lot of can be blamed on WWE Creative because they are going up against the epic game 7 between the Thunder and the Warriors and I'm actually glad I missed the first hour Raw because Nothing was really worthy at that time. If it, it was the rest one worthy segment that we will be talking about on these raw reactions, and that is the return of John Cena. John Cena comes back. He actually gets a surprisingly a little bit of a standing ovation. There are no John Cena sucks chants. I actually start chanting John Cena sucks and. Watching it on my TV, there are no John Cena sucks chance. That's a surprise. Maybe because it was just Green Bay or the crowd wasn't really into it that night. Who knows? Anyway, John Cena comes out, gives a little promo of about little promo about Memorial Day and how we have to honor our Americans and we have liberty and freedom. And he goes on for that for like five minutes, and then he talks about the new era. Does he still fit in this new era of WWE? And if he does, then the future still has to go through him. And this brings out AJ Styles. And for five, more than five minutes, the, ch the crowd chants, AJ Styles, let's go Cena. And AJ Styles has to cut him off and say, John Cena. It's finally an honor to meet you after such a long time. And then AJ Styles gives him his dues of how he's the first one here and the last one to leave. And they go on to shake hands on all that jazz. And here comes the club. Anderson and Gallows come in to ruin Cena's homecoming. And then they tell AJ Styles, we're not here to kiss ass. John, I'm not here to kiss John Cena's ass like you're doing, AJ Styles. We're here to kick some ass. And they're going to go to kick AJ Styles' ass. And John Cena is ready to to team up with AJ Styles. And then, as Cena throws his shirt into the crowd, AJ Styles hits him with a phenomenal forearm without a springboard. And then, they, Anderson and Gallows rush the ring and start ganging up on him. And oh my goodness, Bull Lit Club is back in the WWE. Well, they've act I mean, Bullet Club has arrived in the WWE, and it's too sweet. The Bullet Club is here. The club is here. The Bullshit Club. Whatever you want to call it. The Bullet Club has arrived. Officially arrived in the WWE. And they officially arrived in the form of a beatdown on John Cena. And AJ Styles is not done there. They, they're not done there. AJ Styles continues to beat down John Cena. He runs down to the ring like three more times. And punches him to the face. Because he don't want none. He don't want none. He don't want none of John Cena. And man, that was an epic segment. But what I'm concerned about now... Now that he's in a feud with John Cena, is WWE's commitment towards put letting Cena put over AJ Styles, and what I mean by that is letting AJ Styles win this feud, because sometimes in John Cena feuds, his rival wins the first match and then John Cena wins the way, win the rest of the the matches. I hope that doesn't happen with AJ Styles, but you know you can never go wrong with WWE booking. When it comes to John Cena. Continuing on with Anderson and Gallows, they attack the New Day while they're fighting the VOD villains in the opening match of Raw. And why they attack the New Day? Who who knows? I don't they had a backstage interview segment saying, Oh, we're just getting started and stuff. They attack the New Day and this is gonna be a great rivalry. New Day's first real rivals since ever. Maybe since Cesaro and Tyson Kidd. Or I don't know, maybe ever. But anyway, this is going to be an interesting rivalry between 
these two tag teams and not even the numbers advantage for the New Day can get past Anderson and Gallows. But it was a great way to set up this rivalry between these two tag teams, New Day versus Gen Anderson and Gallows. It's going to be a fun, epic feud to watch. And now with the inclusion of AJ Styles, now it's going to be an even fight. Roman Reigns was out there again talking about how was how he was the guy. He's not a good guy. He's not a bad guy. He's the guy. And he talked about how Seth Rollins is not a man if he keeps running away like a little pussy. And he wants Rollins to come out and fight like the man he's supposed to be. And here comes Seth Rollins. He doesn't even speak. He he goes to the ring and he goes, just eh, fuck it. I'm, I'm out of here. And then Roman Reigns music hits. And then here comes Seth Rollins running down to the ring like he did at Extreme Rules, trying to sneak attack Roman Reigns. But this time, Roman Reigns catches him in an instant, and then Rollins just like stops and like, that's it. That's the end of the segment. It's like, really? That's all? I mean, they couldn't do better than that. I mean, couldn't Roman Reigns have gotten like some retribution? Like, maybe dove at, like, as Rollins was walking away, like, from behind, like, with his back turn, Roman Reigns could have done that awesome dive off the, over the top rope from behind. That would have been, that would have been cool. But, honestly, that was not a good way to build up to their match at Money in the Bank. But, I mean, they have, if they have three weeks left until Money in the Bank, but this could, should have been a way more better segment. This Raw was filled with mostly pointless matches and segments because, well, it's a holiday episode of Raw and we need to celebrate Memorial Day and honor our troops. And so, Vince McMahon decided we're going to have a pointless episode of Raw today. Yeah! So, in our main event, we're going to have all the Money Bank participants compete in a six-man six tag team match. All the baby faces, Dean Ambrose, Cesaro, Zami Zayn, will go up against Trish Jericho, Kevin Owens, and Alberto Del Rio. And wait, wasn't there supposed to be a seventh man or an eighth man? Um, I guess they're going with just six men in this Money in the Bank ladder match, as like usual, as old. Anyway, the baby faces get the win in what was actually a good main event, but nothing to advance the Money in the Bank ladder match, just to promote it. But it was a good way to end Raw. I, I have to admit that it was a fun little match. Good way to end Raw. We also had Enzo Amore returning to action, teaming with Big Cass to defeat the Dudley Boys in what should be their final match against the Dudley Boys because they got a clean win and that shouldn't be the end of the feud right there. And they should be feuding maybe with the Vaude Villains next week or who knows, like they're not really that many tag teams to feud with right now. Zack Ryder also defeated, no wait, it's the other way around. <laughs> Zack Ryder didn't defeat Rusev because WWE doesn't care about Zack Ryder. Rusev defeated Zack Ryder with that new back-breaking accolade where he, Rusev splits him in half. And Rusev found his new rival in the form of Titus O'Neil. Titus O'Neil. Titties O'Neil. And they're now, they're basically feuding uh, over how America is great and how America is not great. It's it's an American versus Foreigner again. It should be fun, but I think that's a little bit overused, but it should be a fun feud nonetheless. It's a nice way for Titus O'Neil to rebound, and I like the way how Titus O'Neil was used this way. He was the first one to strike. He was the first one. If You know how he said, let's fight? He literally meant, let's fight. He was the first one to... to to punch Rusev. He was the first one to attack Rusev. It's rather than have the heel attack the face, it was vice versa this time. I like that. That was a good way to book Titus O'Neil. And although Titus O'Neil won't win the United States Championship, you know, this should be a good way to build him back up after that suspension, which he didn't deserve. The other pointless match we had was Natalia losing to Dana Brooke in a very short match that nobody cared about and Charlotte and Dana Brooke beat down Natalia only to be stopped by Becky Lynch and Charlotte and Dana ran ran away like pussies literal pussies and they're probably gonna have a tag team match at Money in the Bank also the very pointless opening segment on Raw had 
Shane McMahon and Stephanie talk about the rumored brand extension WWE draft thing that I kind of covered in my SmackDown Going Live video. Uh, I don't think I did, but the link will be in the description for that. And then the New Day talked about how they don't want to be separated because they're your WWE World Tag Team Champions. And yeah, you don't want to split up the New Day. The New Day are cool. But yeah, it's like you don't want to split up the New Day in the, in the WWE draft. And, yeah, they shouldn't split up the Tag Team Champions. The Tag Team Champions should be on both shows. And, what happened after that, they were just dancing, and Stephanie was about to twerk for us until the Vaudevillians came out to ruin the whole segment. The segment was just, eh, it's just filler. Oh, yeah, we also had the Usos defeat Breeze Dango, who sh still should have been called for Breeze. Oh, wait. They don't want to get sued by that company who makes those Febreze products. And then, the only thing I liked about that match was the booking of the Golden Truth. Because, I like, although I don't, I didn't like the Golden Truth at first because, like, like the weird interactions between Goldust and R-Truth and how Goldust didn't want to be his tag team partner and shit with R-Truth. I actually like them as a tag team now. They actually, actually could be a good tag team. It could be like the modern day version of Goldust and Booger T. Well, not really, but it, it could be. There could be a fun tag team. But they just got to get past um, this feud with Va Von Dongo and Tyler Breeze. Fa Breeze. But this was otherwise. Um, pointless segment, but a good, a kind of good way to establish the Golden Troop as now a somewhat cohesive unit. Yeah, overall, Raw was just one of those other, another holiday episodes, and yeah, I guess they just really didn't have it in them today, because, oh, well, it's a holiday, it's Memorial Day, and it's like, let's just kick back and relax and eat hot dogs and pizza. And not only that, it's, they were just competing with other stuff today. There's that that day. There's that epic game seven between the Thunder and the Warriors, which was epic. That was an epic way to cap off that series. And I can't wait for that rematch between the Warriors and the Cavs on Thursday. That'll be fun. And unfortunately, SmackDown will have to compete with that as well. And I know SmackDown will lose to that as well. And, yeah, Raw well, was not lackluster. I mean, it's just one of those hol another holiday episodes. That's all I can say. Anyway, guys, what did you guys think of Raw this week? What did you guys think of AJ Styles turning heel? Which was basically my only highlight of the night. <laughs> and, yeah, just leave me your thoughts of Raw in the comments below. And if you guys want to give your thoughts on the NBA Finals and of how you guys thought of the Western Conference Finals, leave them in the comments below too. And I'll take some time to read them. Alright guys, don't forget to subscribe for more. Join me every Tuesday up until August, whenever I'm done, until whenever I'm done with the summer. Every, all summer long, I'll be doing raw reactions and WWE pay-per-view predictions and reactions and don't forget to watch all my other videos on the Dylan Lasagna, Dylan Lasagna channel follow me on all my social media accounts they're always in the description of all my videos and always be delicious <laughs>